The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IONS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. One of the gifts near-death experiencers sometimes return with from the other side is a knowledge of future events, both for their own lives and sometimes for the rest of the world as well. Our return guest today, Kenneth Lett, is just one of those NDE years, and as an adult remembers visions he had as a child, which were then uh, disguised for his own protection. Ken was on the show last Christmas, but he first described his remarkable experience on NDE Radio's past shows of November 9th and 16th, 2015. Today's interview looks at prophecies he received as a child that seem particularly relevant today. Ken's NDE began shortly after getting uh, prepped for an operation on his burst appendix, A nurse strapped the eight-year-old to an operating table where he was sedated with ether. The year was 1963, about a month before the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, and Ken saw that coming, and much more, visions that speak to a dangerous situation that we find ourselves in today. Ken, welcome to NDE Radio. Hi, Lee. Good to hear your voice again. Yes, good to have you back. Ken, let's begin by uh, telling the audience how you were protected through childhood from uh, remembering those scary visions and and then how the memories came back to you. Okay. Um, After I saw uh, images of the future, um, Mother in Heaven had been observing my reaction to everything. And uh, she stepped forward and... uh, the, the entity that was taking me through those future visions, um, I call her the teacher. Um, so mother stepped forward and told the teacher that uh, she had decided that she needed to protect me um, if, I, if I decided to go back to earth. Um, she wanted to protect me to keep me from um, becoming a prophet when I was a child. And um, so... I don't remember a physical movement of hers, but I could feel her reaching inside. um, Well, it's hard to describe this, but I could feel her reaching inside. It felt like inside my head. Hmm. And she started rubbing or smoothing it, and she told me just to relax. uh, Don't be afraid. And she reached in and smoothed out what I had seen, and then told me that I would I would be protected through my childhood and that uh, the memories of what I had seen would come back to me when I was adult. And um, when they came back, uh, started to come back, I should say, was um, right immediately after a dream I had that was very intense where God's voice woke me up and... Um, I, I don't know if you want me to give that detail. I've spoken about that before, but um, sure, go God ahead. Woke me up. Well, th- okay. Let me describe the dream. I was in my early twenties, uh, sleeping very, very hard, and um, I heard God's voice, and He said very loud and clear, "Kenneth, Peter, let." And I became aware that I was. Um, inside my small hometown church. Um, I was naked, (laughs) and I was hiding behind uh, the furthest back pews um, of the church. Uh, I peeked over, and I I looked up toward the altar, and I understood that God's presence was there. I heard uh, a bubbling stream. I saw grass. I heard birds, and the air was very fresh up there. And uh, it was beautiful. But I acknowledged or recognized that it was God. And um, so God said, will you approach me? And I became self-conscious and a little bit unsure of myself. And so I I peeked over the pews and I said, I don't think so. I don't think I'm ready. I, I was a little bit confused as to what was going on. 
But as soon as I said that, the dream ended. And then um, after that, it, it was almost immediate. Uh, the days, the weeks, months, years after that, um, my memory is, is clearing. And I, I hear, I, under, I don't hear, but I understand more and more what I saw. And it started out with the very first segment that I witnessed, and that was the uh, assassination of JFK. That was the strongest, the most clear thing in my mind. Um, and then from there, um, I spoke to the teacher entity, and I asked her. I was upset, right? I questioned what I saw and why it was happening. I understood that it was JFK. I uh, asked the teacher entity why God would let something so terrible happen. Um, because he was, when I was sick and I was up in heaven, he was still alive. Um, he wasn't assassinated until I think I had been recovering in the hospital for at least a couple of weeks. Um, and then it, he was shot. And I remember the nurses in the hospital talking about it kind of in hushed voices, you know, in the hallway just outside my room, and they were very upset. But, you know, I was so sick, I didn't, it didn't really register at the time. So anyway, I asked the teacher entity um, why God would let something so terrible happen. And I remember, now this is a little more detail that I haven't shared before. I remember the teacher entity giving me, giving me a vision of the United States and the way they were involved in the world um, in the past. And I remember a very clear view of World War II or an explanation that we had been a very good influence on the world um, during World War II. And then immediately after, we we did very good things um, because we we started to help the world rebuild and reorganize. Yes. The Marshall Plan. And we, yeah, and we helped. We we were a tremendous help to a lot of countries that were devastated. But then it was I believe what I saw was like in the early fifties. I believe that we were starting to fall out of favor. I, I had the understanding that God was supporting us and on our side in World War Two. But then in the fifties we started to act contrary to what God wanted us to do. And I also, um, I don't have a distinct memory of the teacher telling me this, but um, when I read about the United States adopting um, on our money, in God we trust, and then adding um, under God, indivisible, to our Pledge of Allegiance, and that happened in the early 50s, mm -hmm. um, that was the wrong move. Because that implies that everything that our country does, financially, politically, uh, when we wage wars, when we get involved in conflicts, that God is still on our side. And I, I do remember that that wasn't, that wasn't considered a good thing that we did. Um, then there was the Korean War. That was not. That was not something that God liked, I don't believe. And so, in direct answer to my question, why would God allow JFK to be assassinated? Uh, it was explained that our past behaviors and things that we had done sometimes come back to haunt us. It's choices that humanity makes. And, uh, yes, I believe God was on our side during World War II. Um, he wanted to see an end to the killing and the fighting and everything, and he helped us. But after that, we didn't act like the best big brothers in the world. We ch we changed. Mm. You wrote uh, in, in uh, revising uh, uh, so, some of the things that you'd written in, in your book that um, uh, the United States would uh, become a bitter and angry nation. And... Um, mm -hmm. And that uh, that was obviously going to influence what uh, what came next. Um, right. Let's let's talk about where we are um, moving into today and and 
what you saw of um, of what's happening now and in the in the future. Well, when when I was told that America would become a bitter and angry nation, um, the teacher entity told me that let me take you to a place in the future where you will see the end result of what America will become. And then it was, I was told, um, the very first vision I had was of the, the, the facade or the, the front of the Supreme Court building. And I was told that close to the end of our power and influence as a nation, that something important would take place in the Supreme Court. Uh, then it jumped from there to a vision of um, Hillary Clinton, or a woman, I should say. But it, it was very much like Hillary um, campaigning and giving speeches. And I recall distinctly the voice of that woman that I saw was very similar to the voice that Hillary used when she was campaigning in uh, 2016. She had kind of a voice that she was using it to portray strength or whatever, um, to give people confidence, I suppose. It's something she probably practiced. But the, the thing that appalls me in the current uh, political atmosphere is people who uh, dismiss her offhand. They've heard things in the past that they don't like her, that she can't be trusted, and she's a bad person. Uh, no, I didn't get that. I actually, um, I remember the message I got re involving her was that she would be one of the last good chances for our country to turn around. Um, I don't, re I know I claimed in the past that I thought that she would win. Um, but you know, I, we know she didn't. Although <laughs> a slight consolation to me is she did win the popular vote. Yes, but unfor unfortunately, because of our the way our nation, our, our laws are structured around elections, uh, she wasn't allowed to to take the presidency. So, um, right after I saw Hillary, and I did see a man standing with her, but I I didn't see a clear vision of who that person was. But I understood it was was another. So I'm pretty sure that was Bill, her husband. And then right after that. I was shown, I sort of like flew like a bird out into the ocean, the Atlantic. And I saw the Atlantic was very choppy and it was heaving. It was sort of explained to me as in, in these ended times, the, the ocean will become very angry. And that's what it looked like. And I could actually feel, feel rain or water spraying against me as I was floating out over the ocean. Um, then I could hear the roar of, of wind, and I saw a small military-type ship bobbing in the water. And somehow I got the understanding that that ship was from Europe, but uh, more strongly I, I understood that it was probably from uh, Great Britain. And they were there to lend assistance, but it was the one ship. That's all I saw. Then the vision changed, and it moved up and down the East Coast, and I was told that um, there would be storms and damage all up and down the East Coast. The worst of it would be in Florida, and then the states north of there. Well, we've had, we've had a major hurricane that hit New Jersey, was it? Uh, was that Hurricane Sandy? Mm. And um, New York. That was... New York and New Jersey were both damaged in the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah, that's been a few years back. And then since then, we've had a hurricane in uh, Texas. Uh, Florida was recently hit, and um, so were the Carolinas. And those are states north of Florida. So um, to me, that's pretty strong confirmation that what I saw is, is starting to happen. So um, those storms are hitting mostly the East Coast. Mm. Do you think, the, do you take this to be a product of uh, global warming or or something to do with God's punishing us? 
I, <clears throat> I never got the impression that it was a punishment. I never got that. I, and it, it wasn't, the burden wasn't put on me to be a spokesperson for God to, um, warn the populace that you're making mistakes and God is angry. That was never implied. Um, I, it was more like it was just an explanation of what I would see when I, I get older. Um, so this is that, something we were bringing on ourselves then. Well, I, I think scientifically we can, uh, we can state that global warming has an effect on our weather patterns and, um, Chances are those storms wouldn't be so severe if not for the pollution and air pollution and whatever, uh, yes. making it worse. So, you know, I can look at it in a scientific way. I'm not so totally spiritual that I'm not going to go out and beat the Bible and tell people to straighten up because God's punishment is coming. I'm just not that kind of guy. Mm. Um so uh, moving on from the storms, then um, the next vision I saw was a very disruptive man um, in our government. And I, I'm pretty sure what I saw or the person I saw was uh, Donald Trump. And I saw him inside the buildings arguing with just about everybody and um, causing a lot of unhappiness and disruption. And um, then I saw him, I think, what appeared to be like the Oval Office. He was at his desk, and a group of men walked into his office and confronted him. And then immediately he was moved. And the next vision, I saw him standing outside the government buildings uh, in Washington, D.C., speaking to crowds of people and shaking his fist. Now, I don't know if that's an indication of these rallies that he's holding or if it's a factual event of him being removed from office and the next thing he does is tries to get his followers to um, act up. That I don't really know for sure. But I do see immediately upon his leaving the office, or I did see it upon his leaving the office, the one of the next visions I saw was people fighting because of him in a city somewhere on the East Coast. And from where I saw it, it looked an awful lot to me like Boston, somewhere in that area, that there would be some civil dispute and that um, people were fighting in his name and that people were getting hurt. And that was also when I saw people who appeared to me as black shadows. And I don't mean the race. I mean the intent. The um, um, Their actions were black um, as evil. Mm. And um, that they were enticing, they were inciting violence, and they were purposely pushing people to fight. And they were using misinformation and um, I got the impression that they were not Americans. Uh, they looked like us, but they were not Americans. They had an evil intent. They were purposely trying to cause more disruption. Mm. And um, the people go along with it for a while. And I saw people getting hurt. Um, but the, ne the very next vision, now this I haven't communicated publicly before. You're, you're the only one that's heard it um, because you've read what I sent you. Yes. But the very, next thing, the very next thing that I saw was in a man, and I believe it was Donald Trump because I do remember him being blonde. Um, so I saw the president inside um, a spinning disruption if you can um, picture like a, a spiral spinning. Well, spinning is a theme that continued throughout my uh, near death. Mm. And the spinning rotation, I saw him stuck in it, and it pulled him away from us, and then blip, he disappeared, and he was gone. I believe what that means is that uh, he will pass away, mm. that 
he will be there causing much disruption after he's removed from office. I don't believe he will live very long after that, and then he will be gone. But then after um, he's gone, I saw people getting even more agitated and more upset. And I, I believe the conditions or the situation around his passing away will not be taken well. There will be suspicions and, and disbelief. And the people, mostly the people who supported him the strongest, will be the ones that will have the hardest time accepting that he's gone. And um, those people will be mostly in the southeast of America. And also those will be the people who predominantly follow the words and the leadership of the televangelist churches, the fundamentalists, uh, the ones who worship money and political involvement. Uh, the ones who fly around in their private jets, uh, the ones who claim to speak for God, but they don't. You know, um, I've not really talked to you about this in depth too much, Lee, but um, I can I can view a televangelist a televangelist on the internet or on TV. I can I can listen to them for not more than five minutes, and I can tell they're lying. And boy, do they like to claim that they speak for God. And by the way, God spoke to me last night. He told me. Ugh. Pew. <laughs> Hypocrites. These horrible people. Yes. And all they want is our, all they want is our money. And mm-hmm. they worship, they worship Capitol Hill like it's their Vatican. Ah, uh, that's not, that's not what religion should be doing and then they try to enact legislation that controls our lives and the two things that I see that are very hypocritical of them is the abortion issue and then um, any kind of legislation that restricts gay people self-righteous terrible and mm. and then they get caught you know sometimes those leaders they get caught uh, going to a um, paying for hookers and stuff and, ah, uh, just, just like, they're just setting themselves up for the fall. And in, in, this, just, in the vision though, Ken, do you see them taking a political stance or a political role, uh, above and beyond what they've been doing? Just, you know, not just preaching from the pulpit, but actually leading a revolution of some sort? Um, I, they were only put to me as um, having influence over why Donald Trump was elected. Oh. But after that, I didn't really see any reference to them. Um, but, you know, I've seen in the news, as many people have, I suppose, that uh, they're still promoting Donald Trump as someone that God supports, and uh, I can tell you that he doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> now, now, you also wrote that you uh, you saw this evolving into oh, something like a civil war in this country. Right, right, right. So the, the fighting after Donald is removed from office is in two phases. The first is the fighting that I saw in a city, a major city on the East Coast, but I had the understanding at the same time that there'd be fighting in other places as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it kind of dies down, and then Donald is stuck in that spiral, and then he disappears, which I, under- I understand to be um, he will pass away. But immediate- immediately after that, the fighting intensifies tremendously, and uh, the fighting is taking place mostly in the South. Um, so the next major event after that fighting begins, the second phase, I saw the black shadow people again. And I saw them acting in a very covert way outside a building. And I remember asking the teacher entity, what is this place? Why is this important? And what are they doing? Now, I, what I wrote, I, I told you it was a, a center of information or it was a broadcast of some kind. 
specific words were not given to me, but I got a general sense of what was going on in that, in that building. I think it would be easier for me to to describe it, or better for me to describe it, as perhaps a source of information that people rely on. That could be tied to the internet. Mm-hmm. Could probably be tied to a television, a cable broadcast, perhaps. But I saw this place invaded by these black shadow people, and they break in, and people are getting hurt, and they shut the place down. Um, I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's Fox News. I don't know if it's CNN. I don't know if it's NBC, CBS. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the location of it looked like it was in uh, northern Georgia, uh, perhaps in Atlanta. Well, that might be CNN in that case. Yeah. Is that where their headquarters is? I believe so. Atlanta. Well, it, I, when, when I saw that happen, I was asking, questioning, why is this necessary? Why are people doing this? And the response I got was, um, the flow of information is causing people to be more agitated, more angry. Mm-hmm. So when I first saw the place being shut down, I thought to myself, well, good, maybe this will make people straighten up. People won't be so angry. Maybe it will help. doesn't help. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it feeds the fire. To shut them down makes people even more agitated, more upset. Then I saw the rise of two men. And this is close to the end of our civil conflict. Then I saw two men rise in power. I, I can't describe who they are or what they looked like. But I know that their intentions were evil. They have total disregard, total lack of respect for America in general or for the general good of the populace. They don't care. They are secretly behind the scenes feeding and fueling this disruption and they're doing it through money and influence. And I don't really know if that's political influence. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're somehow getting people upset and and doing terrible things to each other um, based on the leadership these two men are giving. One man, one man is stronger and more influential than the other. The stronger one is about as evil as you can imagine, actually um, laughing and enjoying the disruption, mm. the destruction the death, the tearing apart, the fabric of our culture, that's all he wants. Um, So I was pretty disgusted in watching that because... um, Now, is he one of the shadow people? No, but it seems to me he's their leader. Could it be... uh, You you wouldn't get the sense that he was perhaps a, a Vladimir Putin, for example. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I've seen Vladimir in the news, so well, we all have probably. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't. It didn't resemble him, but I do remember dark hair, mm-hmm. and his laugh was just evil. Uh, really enjoying the disruption, like it just made his day. Um, Can we have? Behavior. We have just two minutes left, so. Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> Time goes quickly on this show. Uh, so what happens if you can summarize it in, in the next two minutes? Well, okay, after I saw the uh, information center shut down, then the fighting intensifies even more, and it's a full-blown war. Um, so I saw an army from the west approaching the eastern half of the country, and then the Destruction and the death and everything involved with war is over the top. But at the same time, part of me, it's like I have a slight memory of people uh, suffering and dying from natural disaster. So there's a very strong possibility that there's a major 
catastrophe, like an earthquake or something happening right mm-hmm. in the middle of all that, of the fighting. And I do recall a large group of people dying all at once because of water. I do remember that too. Mm-hmm. So then there's the war. When the war is, war is over, I saw people in the southeast just sitting around listless, shaking their heads, taking in all the destruction and asking themselves, why did we fight? Why did we do this? And why did we believe so many wrong things? Because it was the cause of everything we see now, which is nothing but destruction. Uh, well, Ken, so, I hate to I hate to stop here, but we are out of time. It's it, okay. it's an amazing story, and uh, as as these things come to pass, and I believe something along these lines might just might, we will have you back again to talk some more about it. Um, so sure, that, fine. Thank you so much. If listeners would like to hear this show again or any of our past shows, including the earlier interviews with Ken from December 25th, 2017, or November 6th and 16th of 2015, go to our website at nderadio.org and hit the Past Shows button. And for information about IANS, go to their website at iands.org. Be with us again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for more NDE Radio. And this is your host, Lee Whitting, saying thanks for listening.